Hi, I'm Josh Stinson, the video editor here at Volition, and over the course of this project I've been working with programmers to improve our capture mode tools. These are essentially a suite of camera tools that we can use to capture nice looking footage of our games, either for internal presentations, pre-rendered cinematics, or even game trailers. Now, the previous videos documenting how to use capture mode are pretty outdated at this point, so we're going to be starting off with the basics and controls before we get into any of the more advanced stuff for the people who will be using this for capturing trailer footage. Now, I'm sure everyone is familiar with slew mode, which is when you press tilde and S to detach the camera from the player character so you can freely move the camera on its own to do whatever it is that you need to do. Now, capture mode is essentially that, but far more advanced. And before we go any further, I have to address the number one thing that trips everybody up. In the console, you activate capture mode by typing in capture underscore mode. Do not do this yet unless you already have two controllers plugged in before you even start the game. Because if people use capture mode and you only have one controller plugged in, you're not going to be able to move the camera. You're only going to be able to move the player character. So first, make sure you have two controllers plugged in before you start the game. Then when you get back here, we'll be good to go. So if you're going to be toggling between normal gameplay and capture mode a lot, I would definitely recommend using bind underscore key and binding the capture mode command to some key on your keyboard that the game is not using, like O. That way, every time you press O, you will toggle between capture mode and normal gameplay without having to go into the console and typing in the command over and over again. So let's look at capture mode. So when we enter capture mode, the camera is detached from the player. So we have two controllers active right now. Controller 1 retains full control over the player character. You can even still use uh, menus and all of that, you just can't see them. So, for instance, we can pop open the weapon wheel and still switch weapons if we need to. One thing to watch out for is if you accidentally bring up the phone menu or the pause menu while in capture mode, because you'll still be able to move the camera around, but the player won't respond to controls. And if you want to fix that, you have to back out of capture mode and close whatever menu you currently have open. The second controller that we have plugged in is the one that controls the camera. The camera works a little differently than slew mode does. So, first of all, the physics of the camera. The camera will tilt in whatever direction you are currently moving. It does this slowly, and then once you come to a stop, the camera will go back to its default resting position. So, controls for the camera. You can crane the camera up and down with the triggers on either the Xbox or PlayStation controllers. So right trigger or R2 cranes you up, and left trigger or L2 cranes you back down. We can also roll the camera on Xbox, that is the X and B buttons, or square and circle on the PlayStation controller. So X will roll us left, and B will roll us right. If you ever need to reset the camera's uh, roll so that you're parallel with the ground again, just click in the right stick and that will reset you. We can also alter the FOV of the camera. This is with the Y and A buttons on Xbox or triangle and X on PlayStation. So the Y button will zoom you in and the A button will zoom you out. There's no way to reset the FOV, you just need to dial in whatever looks good to you. So sometimes you may need to capture something that's a little bit further away or you want to catch up to a moving target or something, but the camera's just moving too slow. An easy way to get around this is if you press the right bumper or R1 on a PlayStation controller, this will toggle a three times speed multiplier for all speed values for the capture camera. So now we move three times as fast. We also look around three times as fast. Same for roll and zooming in and craning. All of that stuff is now triple the speed. If you ever need to go back to your normal speed, just press RB or R1 a second time and you will untoggle the speed multipliers. 
Now that's it for basic controls. Now we're going to be getting into the settings and some of the more advanced stuff. So first of all, if you ever need to change settings for the capture mode camera, what you need to do is one pause the game, which you do by pressing one on the number pad. It pauses the game and it brings up the capture mode settings window. If for some reason you can't change any of the values and the window is transparent, that is because you are currently focused on the game and not the window. And to switch focus to the window, all you need to do is press F10 and that will bring the window up. So we have a whole lot of settings here. First in the camera section, we have look speed. Increasing or decreasing this changes the speed at which the camera moves with the right stick. Slurp time step, you can just ignore. We have two dead zones here, both for look and movement. So that's the right stick for looking and the left stick for movement. Increasing or decreasing these values changes the dead zone of each stick. So if you increase the value, the dead zone becomes larger on either the left or right stick which means the stick will have to travel further out from the center resting position before the camera begins to uh, react to your input. Um, increasing the dead zone uh, a lot can make it easier to do some types of camera movements, especially slow camera movements, same with decreasing it. It all depends on how you want it to feel. So these other settings we have, we have dolly speed. Increasing or decreasing this changes the speed at which the camera moves side to side. The truck speed, increasing or decreasing that, changes the speed at which the camera moves forwards and backwards. The crane speed, of course, changes how quickly the camera moves up and down. And we also have zoom speed. This in increasing or decreasing this changes the speed at which you increase or decrease your FOV. Now we have some other settings down here about camera modes. We'll be getting back to those in a little bit. The next setting we have are the camera physics. The most used one here is this very top one, the feedback cap. Like I pointed out earlier, uh, the camera kind of gently tilts in whatever direction you're moving and eases back to its neutral position when you stop moving. If you don't want the camera to tilt at all, simply change the feedback cap to zero. Now the camera will not tilt at all while you're moving it. Now the rest of these settings are for the different axes of the camera movement and basically changes how quickly they accelerate and how uh, quickly they tilt and go back to their default resting position. We also have the lens section. So if we turn custom depth of field settings on, we get a bunch of real camera settings that you can use to adjust depth of field. So we have our f-stop, we have our focal distance. We also have our lens length and our near field blur scaler, which changes the blur in the near field closest to the camera. You can also reset the hard-coded defaults. Now, of course, if you go back into gameplay, the custom depth of field settings stay on. So if you want to get your normal depth of field back, you need to one pause the game in capture mode again and just uncheck the box to turn your custom settings off. Other settings we have. In the world setting, we can lock time of day so that time will not move anymore. We can also alter the time of day with this slider. We have toggles for cars and pedestrians. If you toggle one of these off, either cars and or pedestrians will just disappear from the world until you toggle them back on. We have Never Die, which you can turn on to uh, enact God mode. We have Passive AI, which just means that cars, pedestrians, and enemies will just stand in place and will not do anything until you turn Passive AI back off. We also have Notoriety disabled, which just means when, it's, uh, when you have this box checked, you will not uh, have any cops or enemy factions chasing after you while you're committing crimes. And now we have a very important new addition to the world settings here. We have time factor. 
Currently is set to 1, which means the game is running at full speed. You can type in custom values here for your time factor, but also we have buttons for half, quarter, and one-eighth speed. So if we click on half, time factor is now moving in slow motion. So everything is moving at half speed. This can be very useful for getting shots that are complicated and hard to do in gameplay in real time. So if you decrease time factor, that will also affect the speed at which the camera moves. Since we do, we are doing half time factor, the camera is moving half of its values that we, we put in its settings. So if you ever need to move faster in slow motion, you'll either need to change the settings in the capture mode window, or you can toggle on the speed multiplier with the right bumper. And we also have, again, you can go even slower with one quarter or one eighth speed to get extremely slow motion footage. And if you ever need to go back to your normal time factor, just click on the reset button and the game will be reset to normal speed. So finally, we have the spawn section of the capture mode settings. And before we go into this, I want to mention that the capture mode settings menus can also be navigated via controller and it can be navigated with either player 1 or 2. It does not matter which controller you use. So, with this menu, it is currently still a work in progress because we are adding new stuff and removing stuff and changing assets all the time. But later on, hopefully, this will be a little more useful. But you can use this menu to spawn various pedestrians, enemies, vehicles, and weapons. Uh, so... Especially on lists like this, there are multiple pages of enemies, for instance. If you want to flip between the pages, you need to use the left and right trigger on your controller to flip through the pages. You can easily use these menus to spawn objects like this moped. So those are the basics. Now we're going to get on to more advanced stuff. So one thing to know is that on top of the default free roaming uh, camera mode we're using, there are several other camera modes for certain situations. Probably the most common one that people will use is uh, just locking onto a target to follow them. So you need to get a subject in the middle of your camera's view and then press left on the D-pad. This will let you lock on to whatever subject you are looking at. And now because we're locked on, the camera will automatically follow the position of the target. This doesn't mean the camera itself is locked in position, though. Even though we are moving around, we can still freely move the camera and position it whatever way we need. And if you want to unlock from your target, simply press left on the D-pad again, and you're back in free roam mode. Another camera mode that can be very useful depending on your needs is the orbit mode. So if we look at a subject in the center of our view, we press up on the d-pad we are now in orbit mode this is basically for if somebody needs to make uh, short loopable videos of orbits or turnarounds of certain objects in our game so if you are locked on and you're a little too low or a little too zoomed in we have controls for that x and b in the controller let you zoom in and out the left and right triggers let you angle the angle at which the camera is looking at the subject. And you can also use up and down on the camera to look up and down. To frame your subject in whichever way you need. So, the left stick is used for orbiting around your subject that you're locked onto. Uh, it's very easy to do a perfect orbit because in this mode you cannot move the camera up or down or any way other than absolute left and right. Now, of course, there's still sensitivity to the stick, so the more you push the stick, the faster the camera is going to turn. There is no easing on this camera, which means it's a lot easier to loop any footage that you're capturing in this mode. There are some additional settings for this. If we one pause the game, you'll see that in camera mode, in the camera section of our settings window, it's currently selected as orbit. You can use this menu to just make sure you're in the right camera mode, or if you're looking at something in the center of your view, you can even just click these buttons to go into the camera mode that you want. 
but we also have additional settings for orbit mode down here, including the speed at which the camera orbits around our subject. And we also have a Y offset as well. You can either use a slider for this or you can manually type in a value for this. And again, if you want to go back to free roam mode, just press the same button you used to enter whatever camera mode you are currently in. Another useful tip is a lot of the time you may want to frame up your shot while the game is paused. This makes it easier to get the exact angle you want without your subject moving out of place or doing anything else. But if you're paused and you can't move the camera, that's because you're currently focused on the settings window. And again, like I said earlier, just press F10 to toggle to focusing on the game, which allows you to move your capture mode camera even while the game is paused. And if for some reason, the thing you're capturing either for a screenshot or for a video is uh, very heavily timing based and you have to get really granular with it. While the game is paused, you can press zero on the number pad to advance the game by one frame at a time. This can really be helpful if you need to line something up in a very specific way. But here's another camera mode that's very useful. So if we press right on the D-pad while we have something centered in our view, we lock on to the subject, and it's always going to be in the center. This is a little similar to orbit mode. However, we still have camera easing, we can zoom in and out with the left stick, we can angle our, our view with the left and right triggers. But this is basically allows you to follow a subject without the camera following it as well. It will simply just track the subject in its view. So this is really good when you need to, say, do a drive-by shot or you need to track a fast-moving target that is hard to do by hand. So since we're locked on and we're over here, we'll one pause and we can see the camera stays in place, but it tracks, it follows our subject. And again, to get out of here and go back to free roam mode, we just press right in the D-pad. Since that is the same button, we press to activate this specific camera mode. Now I showed you pressing left on the D-pad to follow a subject. This is officially called displacement mode. So if we, say, want to follow a car, that's easy enough to do, but sometimes you may have a cool shot, like, say, a low shot with the car's tires while it's driving real fast, but then the car will go around a corner, and you notice our shot doesn't really look that cool anymore because the, the car has turned, but our camera has not. So we have a separate mode for that called follow mode. So follow mode, you activate by getting something in the center of your view and pressing down on the D-pad. And now that we've locked on, we have some new settings in the settings window at the bottom. So with follow mode, it's like displacement mode in that you, you will follow your subject, but you can also track its pitch, bank, and heading. And these are toggles, so you can track any combination of, these, of the three axes of movement. So a very common use for this is when you need to track a car, you have a cool shot, either an NPC is driving it or a player on controller one is driving the car, and you want to keep your cool shot going even when the car is turning or doing flips or doing going up a ramp or a motorcycle is doing a wheelie, whatever. So since we're, we're tracking all three of these, no matter how the vehicle moves, we will be following it on any axis. Uh, this is definitely probably most commonly used for following cars around corners or if an NPC is turning or something like that. There are some things I need to caution about this mode, however. And that is when you are tracking an object and you, you've locked onto it with follow mode. The right stick works as normal, but we're still working on a bug with the left stick, where when you lock onto a car or basically anything else with this mode, your left stick basically becomes inverted. So I am pressing left on the stick and I am going forward right now. This is an issue we're still working on, but just as a heads up. I should also bring up that you cannot really use this follow mode on the player character while they are on foot. The camera just cannot, this is something we're still working on, the camera will freak out when you are trying to track the player and it will screw up the player's movement as well. However, tracking a player character while they're on a vehicle works perfectly fine.
So here are some other things that can prove to be very useful, whether you're getting uh, in-game footage for game trailers or cinematics, or you're even just getting screenshots for the game. Sometimes you're setting up your shot and it's not looking quite how you want it, either due to too many dead enemies or random physics props being all over the place, or some other object just being there that you don't want in view. So you can target objects, characters, vehicles, basically anything by pressing tilde and T, and you'll know if you've targeted an object because you'll see this wireframe appear on top of it. If you're not targeting the exact thing you want, you can toggle through a bunch of different things by continuing to press tilde T until you get the thing you want. You can also go into slew mode with tilde S and look at whatever it is you specifically want to target uh, in the center of your view and then press right bumper and that will target the exact thing you want. So now that we have the thing targeted, we go into our console and type show debug target info. And this will bring up some new windows. Basically, if you just want to make sh something completely disappear in this target info window, you want to find the visibility checkbox and just untick it and then it'll disappear. It still exists, so you could theoretically retarget it again, and if you need it there for some reason, click it again to make it reappear. Now, say we made that one thing disappear, and we want this wireframe to go away, because it's still here. You can either click on Clear Target, or if you don't have the Debug Target Info window open at all, you can also clear the target wireframe by pressing Control plus tilde plus T, and that will clear your selection. Now, sometimes that isn't enough. Sometimes you have objects in your scene, whether they be props or heads or anything else, that just, they're almost exactly where you want them, but you need to move them or rotate them or something. So say we have this trailer targeted right now, and it's almost positioned the exact way we need it for either a video or for a screenshot, but it's not quite right. So with the object targeted and while in capture mode, press one on the number pad to pause the game. And along with the capture mode settings window, you'll see this new window pop up that's called modify debug target. Now this basically allows you to alter the position and rotation of whatever object you currently have targeted. So here we can either use buttons or sliders to change the values of these positions, or we can manually type in values. And we can also have these values adjusted based on its local or global positions. So here we can say, move it to the side a bit. You can also move things up and down. Um, move it on its Z axis, and then we can change its heading. And for whatever other objects, you know, we could also change the bank or the pitch if we needed to. And again, you can also just type in values if you need to do that as well. And again, once you have something set up the way you want, you just press Control, Tilde, and T to clear your debug target selection. And that's about it for capture mode for now. If you're using this and you find any issues with it or you have questions, just feel free to message me on Teams or email me. Uh, let me know what your issues are and I can help you with those. And you know, if you have good ideas for capture mode as well, please let me know. I would love to make this even more convenient for myself and others. And yeah, thanks for watching.